crown for us. I don't know which, but Steve, um, why don't you take it away and let's talk wines to go with turkey. Um, so let me let me finish my falafel I, I, I bought behind the, you can't see these, the guy behind me, but uh, nonetheless, uh, turkey wine. So the, the most holy of food and wine holidays, uh, Thanksgiving. Um, it, it really, the, the turkey table has kind of evolved. There are a um, lot of things that are maybe not traditional to um, the event, but are traditional to families, uh, traditional to uh, cultures. And so the table over the years has gotten larger and larger and larger. And, and we have kind of every possible thing on that table, or at least we should have every possible thing on that table now. So wine does actually, certain wines do very well uh, with uh, the Thanksgiving table. Um, kind of what, so to, to give a sense of what we're looking for. The, the general table has um, a lot of different proteins often, um, vegetables from greens to root vegetables. So there's a lot of diversity in that respect. But one of the things that typically carries through all of them is, is fat. So um, what we're looking for with wine is, is something that will um, kind of help lighten the load on the fat, wash away the fat off our tongue and kind of refresh the palate. So wines that are a little higher in acid typically do best in this, in this context. Um, but there are so many different things. And as we've said before, at the end of the day, you really, you, you don't ever drink a wine that you don't actually like. That's, that's not the point. So finding a wine that you do like uh, makes it all, all the better. Um, so generally speaking, um, what work best with Thanksgiving wines, again, um, high acid wines, wines that have a, a decent amount of fruit component. So some wines, I mean, they should taste like fruit because they are fruit, but some wines have more of a fruitiness. Um, and a lot of the things on that table love those things. I mean, you know, roasted pork with peaches. I mean, a, definitely a thing. Ham often can get fruit sauces. Uh, turkey, certainly cranberry sauce, cranberry jelly, um, other, other various fruit sauces. So game birds and pork often like that fruit profile. And I'm, I'm only ex uh, focusing on those because those tend to be the, the most, most popular proteins, but there are definitely others. Um, then you have issues like um, vegetables. Now, Green beans, um, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, they kind of have some challenges because there's a lot of chemistry in those things. And there are times where wine can kind of draw um, elemental flavors out. So, I mean, sometimes you might eat a certain vegetable with a certain wine and, and you'll, it almost tastes metallic um, or you taste elemental sulfur because uh, obviously there's a lot of minerals in vegetables, health health benefit of eating them. And um, wine can sometimes coax those things out. So matching kind of the chemistry that we know we're going to get helps things out. So I think, trying to think of how I want to do this. I think we'll start tasting some wine and then kind of maybe veer back toward uh, various courses, because certainly the wine that, you know, might go with a certain uh, appetizer might not go with a certain dessert. So let's, um, let's start by tasting the wine and we'll kind of, kind of go through this as, uh, go through the table as we're uh, tasting. So if everyone would, uh, the first wine that we have, we will taste is I can get it to pop into frame. Um, not succeeding at this, but um, Skinner, um, that uh, Grenache Blanc 2019 from El Dorado County. Uh, so starting with this wine, first of all, a little bit about the winery. It's a kind of a, a neat story. 
Um, El Dorado is, uh, if you were to drive from Sacramento to Lake Tahoe, you would pass El Dorado. Um, it, it is, uh, I'm sorry, you'd pass Fair Play, which is in El Dorado County. Um, this area, mountainous foothills to the Sierra Nevadas, um, historically gold mining territory, uh, has been populated since mid to early 1800s. So a lot of history here. In 2006, uh, a, a, a husband and wife, last name Skinner, decided to drive from Lake Tahoe to Sacramento. I'm sorry, Sacramento to Lake Tahoe. And as they're driving by, they see a sign that, that says Skinner. So they pull off the road. And long story short, they discovered that this winery was actually owned by their ancestors in the 1800s who were gold miners who also grew grapes. So they were able to buy uh, about 25 acres down the road, not, not the original property, but um, very close to it. And they decided to get into the wine business and they've been, been pretty successful. Um, the grapes they grow here, so this is... This is um, the foot again, the foothills of the Sierra Nevadas, high elevation, warm days, cool nights. Um, the grapes that grow up there need to kind of be geared toward that. So they um, grew what historically had been grown up there, um, Rhone varietals. So Grenache, Syrah, and in this case, Grenache Blanc. So Grenache Blanc is the white variant of the red grape Grenache. Um, it's believed it, it originated in Spain. Um, they, they use it as well. But it very much likes um, minerally soil, which this is where we are. We're, we're in um, you know, kind of jagged, rocky foothills, kind of air, gold mining country. Um, it, so it very much likes the minerality that the soils, the, the vines have to struggle a little bit. Um, and it takes a little longer to ripen. But when it does, it has really nice apple and pear flavors. So those are the fruit components that, that we're going to bring into the meal here. Um, apple, pear, citrus, um, has a little bit of a, almost a, a little white floral note, uh, like honeysuckle or something like that, um, jasmine maybe, but um, pretty, pretty white flowers, apples and pears, citrus, and then a, a nice amount of acidity with almost, and minerality is a hard, hard word to, do, I mean, hard term to describe, but um, it, it almost, I mean, uh, minerality shows it like the smell of wet concrete, the smell of sea salt. Um, it's more of a smell than a taste, but there's a taste there. Um, unfortunately, you know, in the, it, the wine industry has to kind of, you know, cover the mouth as they're smiling when people ask to define it because it, it, it it's, there's even an argument whether it exists, but that's what you're looking for. You're looking for the smells of, of wet rocks um, in your wine. And I get a little bit of that in, in this wine, but this is a great wine for Turkey. It has a good amount of acidity. So you, you take a bite of the, 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 the turkey with the dressing and gravy, and this just kind of slides in there, cuts the, I mean, the acid cuts the fat, washes it away, and leaves you with this delicious kind of fruit fruit profile. Um, but Grenache Blanc is a delicious wine for, for Thanksgiving. Now, there are other white wines. Um, probably um, my favorites would be, uh, number one, uh, Dry Riesling. Um, it, it has, again, a, a good amount of acidity, and we're talking about the dry style, not the sweet. Um, so, think uh, malic acid, green apples, um, that kind of acidity, um, minerality and, and usually stone fruit flavors. I, by the way, this, this too has, has some kind of, um, peach apricot pit kind of flavors going on. Um, but, uh, dry Riesling, uh, Sauvignon Blanc, um, and it kind of depends how edgy you, you like Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand is, is a little, um, a uh, little more crisp, um, and Sauvignon Blanc from Napa Valley, the, the acidity is not as bright, but where that plays in, again, acid to cut the fat, but um, Sauvignon Blanc has 
in its flavor profile, sort of a green note and, and like think uh, lime skin, uh, bell pepper, jalapeno, green grass, but greenness, underripe flavors. And Sauvignon Blanc does really nice work with uh, with vegetables for that reason. It has a greenness in the, in the flavor profile, so it doesn't seem out of place if you're having green beans with it. But Sauvignon Blanc's wonderful. Um, Gewürztraminer. Um, so similar grape, it's an aromatic grape, uh, similar to Riesling. Um, it has more of a, a, a basically, well, Gewürztraminer is the spicy grape of Traumann. So it originated in Northern Italy and worked its way to Germany and, and, and Alsace and along the, the French German border. Um, but Gewürztraminer, very fruit forward, um, nice, nice stone fruits and, and baking spice. And again, loves loves everything on the table: the turkey, the fat, the the uh, the gravy, the stuffing, the mashed potatoes, um, all of those things. It just it just loves that. Um, and then and then lastly, I would say, I mean, Chardonnay. Chardonnay is um, it sort of depends on the Chardonnay. Um, you you want something probably with a little less oak. Um, not, not super oaked Chardonnay, but a little lighter on the oak, but, uh, something from France that maybe has, again, a little more acidity to kind of cut through the acid. I mean, uh, cut through the fat and, uh, and accentuate, uh, the other flavors. I think that it, does anybody have any questions on the, on the white wine side of turkey pairings? You can just feel free to unmute yourself, or if you want to um, share what you're tasting and, and what you think of the wine, that's fine too. Um, but just go ahead and let's try to freeform this versus anybody want to say anything? <laughs> and if not, we can we can move on. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Okay. Oh, let's see. Oh, I was. Oh. Kathleen? Sorry. Yeah, oh. the, the Gewurz. <laughs> Yes, we we went to pick out um, wine around Thanksgiving, and the guy at the liquor store was very excited about Gewurzt minor. So he asked us yeah. to use it as a verb, though. Have you Gewurzt? But he also oh. called himself the Rhone Ranger. So yes, you know. <laughs> yes, okay, it's all a, right. It's that a memory that's seared routine. in my mind. <laughs> yeah. Um, Amy, um, no, go, go ahead. I was going to call on Amy. I think Amy was going okay. to speak. Is that yeah. right, Amy? Go ahead and unmute. Oh, well, I wrote it in the chat. But it oh, was, okay. How can you tell the acidity of a wine before you drink it? I mean, if you want to bring a wine that has good acidity, how can you tell sure. outside the bottle that it has good acidity? Um, I guess the 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 easy but not easy answer is where where was it grown? So. Um, there are certain grapes that are considered cool climate grapes. Um, Sauvignon Blanc, for example, uh, is a cool climate grape. It does much better in a region, say, like Russian River Valley in Sonoma. So a, a cool climate region uh, on along a river that extends out to a cold ocean. That's a great place for Sauvignon Blanc. Um, as it gets warmer, as you travel further south in, say, California, um, it, 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 it's a little sugar. Con, I mean, warmth converts acid to sugar generally. So sometimes they will, they will find a cool region and they will pick early to retain it. And this, is, this would be in the southern part. But um, generally speaking, a, a, an acidic wine is going to be determined by where it's grown. Um, so cool climate regions. Um, Anything coastal, um, anything next to a body of water generally is, is, a, is a cooler uh, region. Um, and then certain large regions. I mean, the, the where um, Marlboro, New Zealand, where the vast majority of, of Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand comes from, a cool region. Um, and in fact, they, they probably would not do well growing grapes that, re, that, you know, say Cabernet. Cabernet likes a little warmer of a climate, it, it would be very, we would describe it as very lean, um, a lean wine from a cool region. So it, it, yeah, unfortunately, um, there are certain grapes that should, I mean, there are certain grapes that should be grown in cool climates. Sauvignon Blanc should be a 
high acid wine. Uh, Riesling, even at the sweet level, should have acidity. I mean, there are there are dessert wines uh, from Germany that are are Riesling based that the last thing you notice is your mouth is watering. I mean, even though it pours out viscous uh, in a viscous uh, uh, texture it, it it still has tons of acid so uh, i would say um ask ask at the wine store uh for something from a cool region um that uh i mean that again it should have acid if it's grown properly in the right place hopefully hopefully that answered the question uh, gloria has a question and i i'll just say i i love the way gloria thinks and i also want to tell gloria uh, thank her for the suggestion of discussing boxed wines, which we will also yes, do. Yes, we will absolutely, yes. She, um, we've been getting more and more suggestions and recommendations from uh, people on all our programs, so we appreciate that, Gloria. We just didn't think we could ask people to go out and buy a box of wine for um, sampling, so you'll get a list later, right? But So her question is, if the wine eats the fat, <clears throat> do we save on calories by drinking more of it? Um. Probably not. <laughs> I, think she, uh, I think she knew the I, I would say, though, that it does aid in digestion. So um, it, you, you, may still, you may still own those calories, but you, you may digest a little more comfortably. Um, fair possibly. enough. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Okay. Yeah, I think a wine with a good gravy is just let's eat more of it, maybe. It, it does. It does. Well, and, and, you know, if you think about white wine in, in the inclusion, I mean, French, French cuisine, certainly not the defining cuisine, but a, but a very well-respected one. Um, French cuisine incorporates white wine into a lot of things for, for the inclusion of acid. Um, it, it has a chemistry that makes sauces taste better, uh, um, more intensely flavored. Uh, and um, chicken, uh, I mean, any game bird uh, does very, very well with white wine. Uh, I mean, in, in fact, sometimes the sauce is basically wine and butter and, you know, a few other ingredients and that's it. And that's all it needs. So yeah, uh, white wine, a, a nice, a nice bright acid, fruit forward, uh, decently acidic white, um, great with, great with turkey. So let's move on to the red, let me pour this real quick. Perfect. Um, so, uh, Zinfandel is one of the, the best wines. I mean, there really isn't a best. There are wines that I like more than others. And again, I always, always, always defer to, you know what, um, if, if you like a particular style of wine and that makes you happy, then that is the wine you should drink. I mean, you, you, you play always to your own palate. Um, and that's, there, there, there's, there, you don't need to apologize for doing that. Um, but Zinfandel is absolutely delicious with, um, with, uh, Turkey and, and the Thanksgiving table. Um, Zin is a, is a grape that, that it's one of the few grapes in the United States that we can kind of take ownership of. It, it did not originate here. It, it originated in Croatia. Um, it, it had a family member move to Southern Italy to the Puglia region. Uh, there they refer to it as Primitivo. Um, but it has been in California uh, for 130, 40 years uh, at this point. And um, has really kind of taken on its, I mean, it, it, it is, it, Zinfandel today is a California wine. Um, there are other people who are growing it. Um, the grape can be grown again in Italy and Croatia, but Zinfandel, that version of it is really California. It is really one of the few grapes in the United States that we can say, you know what, we made it this. We, Cabernet, we absolutely didn't. That was the French. Chardonnay, that was also the French. Um, Barbera, Nebbiolo, the Italians, but Zinfandel, even Primitivo. It, Primitivo from Italy is not is has has a fraction of the reputation that Zinfandel from California does. 
So why is in uh, a delicious turkey wine? Again, acidity cuts the fat. But think about think about cranberry sauce. I mean, th this is this is liquid cranberry sauce. Um, those tangy fruit flavors cause other flavors to pop, um, accentuate things, um, kind of ref you know refresh the palate. Because again, we got a, we got you know maybe butter on the mashed potatoes and fat in the gravy and um, you know all sorts of layers of richness. And so a little bit of acid just to lighten the load is 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 quite nice. And I I, I love this wine. So this. This wine um, uh, comes from a winery uh, called, uh, well, named after its winemaker, Carol Shelton. Uh, Carol is, um, she, I wanna say she's maybe in her 40 some year of, of uh, in the business. Um, she is the most award-winning female winemaker in California. Spent a lot of time early in her career working uh, as, assistant winemakers for people like Robert Mondavi. Uh, there's a very, very famous um, winemaker who worked at the time for BV uh, named Andre Telechev. Um, and so Carol really, I mean, she, her mentors were, were not just good. I mean, well, aside from the fact that she uh, was in a, a brilliant class of winemakers at UC Davis, but her mentors in the industry were some of the best in the industry. And about so 15 or 16 years ago, she decided she just, 20 years ago, she decided she just wanted to focus on Zinfandel. Um, and she's, she, she's bent the rules a few times, um, releasing a few other wines, but Zin is what she's most famous for. So this wild thing is um, a Zinfandel from Mendocino County, so right above Napa and Sonoma. It's a fairly cool region. Um, it... Uh, this vineyard, um, I want to say most of it comes from one vineyard in, uh, in Mendo uh, that is, Mendocino is kind of, there's, a, there's an area where uh, kind of a, a lowlands and then um, it kind of moves up toward bench lands and then up toward hillsides. And most of Carol's wines come from bench land and hillside vineyards. So the ones that really struggle. Um, but Zinfandel has this delicious fruit profile. It's cherries and strawberries and um, nice spice notes, black pepper. Um, but again, nice juicy acidity. Zinfandel can get very sweet if it's grown. If it's picked too late, it can get sort of pruney. Um, but her, her wild thing, I mean, the other, I, I guess, one other point in, in to worth making, um, Carol deliberately goes after very old vineyards. And, and in fact, some of the vineyards she sources from are, you know, centenarian vineyards. Um, when a vine gets that old, what you notice is the, 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 the vine, I mean, it looks like a, a tree trunk sort of with, it's bushed out a little bit, but the vines know that they don't, they know their age. They know that they don't need to propagate um, as much as, they don't need to create as much fruit as they did when they were younger. Um, so their energy is focused on smaller clusters. So that's, unfortunately, old vine is not a regulated term. So it, it can mean anything. You pretty much have to, you know, focus on producers where they define what they're meaning. Um, but typically old vine, Zinfandel is, 20 plus year old, uh, at least uh, up to over a hundred. And as the vine ages, the concentration of the fruit gets better. But uh, yeah, I, I, love, I love this wine. I mean, just plum and cherry and spice and some nice, nice wood tones, um, but really, really a, a, a pretty wine. And she, like I said, I, 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 I have great respect for her. She's, she, she actually, it's kind of funny, she, she actually decided to quit her job when, uh, I won't reveal the winery, but she worked for a fairly well-known winery, and the, um, the wine won a major award uh, at the San Francisco wine competition, and she went into her office, and there was a tiny little card with a thank you, and she went into 
um, her boss's office and there were flowers and balloons and everything else. And she knew that she had made that wine and she didn't really get any sort of credit for it. So that was her last day at that particular winery. And she went off and started her own and she's done quite well. But um, any questions about, about this guy? I have a question and you've already answered uh, Jack and Maureen's question with the old vine. So um, besides turkey, I mean, I know we're talking about Thanksgiving, but at least in this house, we might have turkey two or three days a year and that's Thanksgiving the day after mm -hmm. the day mm -hmm. after. So mm -hmm. what other food would each of these wines do well with when we're Certainly. you know, post holiday? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, the nice thing, the, the Skinner, I love this wine because it has, um, it's, 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 it's got enough brightness that you, you almost don't, it does very well with food, obviously, but you don't need the food. Um, so this would be a wine that I would have like before dinner um, with some meats and cheese, a little charcuterie. Great, great little cocktail wine. Has a little more, I would, I would say, I, I probably like it more for the cooler months as a white, just because it's got a little more weight to it. But um, I mean, very, you know, this with uh, Grenache Blanc with salmon um, is delicious. Um, trout, lighter fishes. Um, I would say if the fish got a little fattier, eh, you could still probably pull it off because it's got a, it's, it's got a, a texture to it that would hold up. But um, yeah, so um, lighter proteins, definitely by itself, meats and cheeses, um, salty fried things, um, bright, bright acidic wines love salty fried things. I mean, it's like, it's like bar food. Um, as far as the Zinfandel, now, one of the things that we are lucky um, to, to enjoy uh, is that we have, we, we are one of the four barbecue capitals of the United States and Zinfandel and barbecue, particularly Kansas city style. Um, I mean, it, it, it is a, it is a perfect match. Um, Zin, uh, certain, I mean, Carolina barbecue, which has more, more vinegar focused, um, very few wines would really want to play around with that much vinegar, but Kansas City style sauce, uh, usually a fruit component. Um, it could be, I mean, often it's tomatoes, but it could be cherries, cranberries, a mix of all of those. Um, acidity, so a little kiss of vinegar, definitely. Um, but lots of fruit, wood smoke, pepper spice, um, tanginess. I mean, that's Zinfandel. And when, when, we, have, when we have wineries uh, visiting, that have in their portfolio, um, we know that the the sales rep taking them around will will make a visit to to Oklahoma Joe's or Kansas City Joe's. Um, so barbecue is a fantastic Zin pairing, but uh, I mean it, it it's it's a I, I like Zinfandel in the winter time. It's got a little more body to it. Um, it's a nice you know you can you can sit and sip next to a fire and it just kind of I mean I'm still tasting. It, and this this is even a lighter style, I would say, uh, than some. But um, meatloaf, oh my gosh, meatloaf, awesome with Zinfandel, crazy good with Zinfandel. Um, yeah, I I mean it, the the funny thing is I I've found more things just by having a bottle that's opened on the counter and trying it with dinner and being like, well, who know? I, that's that's delicious. Um, but uh, both of these wines are fairly diverse, and that's. And that's kind of what makes them good on the table. Um, the, the, the turkey table is pretty diverse itself. I mean, you've, you, you know, turkey, ham, um, lots of, I mean, cream-based things, vinegar-based things, um, sweet things, uh, savory. I mean, it's just, just it, there's, there's so much to, to contend with. And these two wines pretty much work across the board. So I would, I would translate that into your everyday meal. I mean, Zinfandel and pizza, it's, it's awesome. Um, there's, there's really very few things that you can't have with, with a good glass of Zin. Okay, Kim would like to know, she says this is a 2018 Zin and are there many mm -hmm. bottles left? Um, so this is current vintage, uh, 2018. 
we're going to see going forward is going to be interesting. So 2018 um, was a, well, it, it really depends on the grade. For, for example, for Cabernet and Napa Valley, 2018 was outstanding. Um, it, there were wildfires and that's, that's become kind of the new normal. There were wildfires in this area. However, most of the, the fruit was picked before the, vi the fires took hold. So it didn't make any difference. Uh, I will say probably you're going to see very little 2020 wine um, because there, there just is so much was damaged that uh, I don't think we're going to see much 20, 2020 wine. But 20, 2018 and 19, we are. Uh, for this wine, this wine probably, in fact, maybe I can even answer that question, but my guess is this wine spent a good 15 to 18 months in a barrel before it was released. So uh, uh, what did she do? 15 months, um, 15 months in barrel. So, um, so yeah, this, this is, this is current vintage and yes, there is, it is still available. So did you just tell us that we have a supply chain problem even with wine? Yes. Um, it's going to be really funky going forward. We, we don't really know what to expect. Um, I mean, it's, I guess that's, that's too is the new normal, but um, everything, there is a shortage of, of all the important things. I mean, um, fortunately, the United States at least has glass and cardboard, which is not anything that uh, Argentina has right now. Argentina has no glass and no cardboard, just full tanks of wine needing a place to put it. Mm. Um, however, um, we've had issues. I mean, the fires have interrupted labor. labor. Um, so, you know, maybe you don't have the picking crew that you had earlier because they moved because of the fires. Maybe you don't have um, anything to pick this year. I mean, uh, there have been all sorts of issues that relate to the winery, but let's say you make some wine and it's ready to go. Um, there is a shortage of warehouse space. There is a shortage uh, of truck drivers. Uh, if it comes from overseas, uh, there are shortages of both shipping containers and the ships to move the shipping containers. Uh, New Zealand, for example, right now, um, for whatever reason, Shipping contain shipping companies are 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 not interested in going to New Zealand right now because they make more money if they go to Asia, and so New Zealand is having trouble moving products because they can't get boats to take their containers. Um, so yes, we will see. Even domestically, there are issues with getting getting product. Um, and and more so than just, I mean, it, most of that is related to logistics. They're just, there, there aren't the, the containers of the trucks to move the product. Marsha would but like we will to see. Know, yeah, that's scary. Um, for this program, especially. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we need wine. Um, Marsha would like to know what recommendations would be suggested for those having ham instead of turkey this year? Okay, so yes. Um, and I and I should have mentioned uh, this as one of my favorite wines with ham, with uh, Thanksgiving. In addition to Zinfandel, would be Pinot Noir. Um, Pinot Noir is it you know again fits the formula. It's got nice acidity. It's got fruit, usually cherry, strawberry, sometimes peach, apricot kind of flavors, um, but stone fruits. Um, good acidity, uh, palate cleansing, refreshing. With ham, it, it almost, I mean, I love Zinfandel with ham, but Pinot is off the chart. And Pinot loves turkey. Again, think cranberry sauce. What does cranberry sauce do to that turkey? It just causes the flavors to pop. And Pinot Noir uh, does that as well. So um, as far as great red wines for, for, um, for Thanksgiving, Pinot, Zinfandel, um, a juicy Merlot is is really nice. Uh, Sangiovese from from uh, Tuscany is great. Again, nice cherry flavors. Um, Cabernet, if you like Cabernet, drink it. Um, it it has 
Uh, it, it is a little fuller body that needs almost like, you know, re I mean, it needs dark meat uh, or red meat. It, it likes a lot of fat um, because it's got a lot of tannin, which is that, that mouth drying uh, astringency that you get. Um, but, but even, even with cab, I mean, you can find cooler, cooler climate Cabernet that has a little more city. I mean, in fact, Cabernet from where the, the wild thing is from, from Mendocino, a little bit brighter, um, doesn't need as, I mean, it's not as intense, but it still has those cab flavor, pro, that cab flavor profile. Um, but yeah, Pinot, Zinfandel, uh, Merlot, Grenache, Sangiovese, um, lighter style cabs, um, Barbera, ooh, Barbera from Northern Italy, uh, Northwest Italy from Piedmont. Barbera is delicious. And it, a lot of, I mean, if you were to line up a lot of these wines, you would definitely notice a common thread. Um, slightly different flavor profiles, but um, good acidity, good fruit, good structure, you know, nice complementary flavors. Great. Any other questions? I was going to ask the appetizer and dessert question since you brought it up, but that just runs yeah. the gamut of, oh, I mean, there could be no. anything. Pumpkin pie, I guess, is a staple, but appetizers so, could be anything. So for appetizers, probably my, my, my go-to recommendation would be bubbles. Um, anything with a little fizz to it. It's just festive. It, it, it's clean. It, it's bright. It doesn't weigh you down you know, it just kind of kicks things off. So I, I always would, would probably recommend, um, like a nice, you know, a cava or a Prosecco or a Blanc de Blanc, something, something with some, some bubbles just to set it off on the other end of the meal dessert. So dessert can be a little tricky. Um, the, one of the more important rules is, um, always have the, uh, the wine that you are, are, I mean, the, 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 the wine should be sweeter than the dessert. Um, so that you don't have, um, you don't have cloy, you know, kind of a, a, a cloying nature. The wine seems flat when it's next to, uh, the dessert. So make sure that your wine is sweeter than dessert. Focus on the flavors. If you've got, um, I mean, pecan pie, one of my most favorite uh, things with pecan pie is um, sherry, uh, Spanish sherry, an off dry uh, Spanish sherry, because it just, it, it Oloroso sherry almost, almost even tastes like roasted pecans. And that just kind of draws that out. Um, so pecan pie and, and a, like, a, like a, a late harvest uh, dessert wine, um, but the Spanish sherry is, is one of my favorites. Um, with, uh, you could do, I mean, with, with, a, with a sweeter style Riesling, if you had say apple pie, that would be delicious. Um, chocolate gets a little challenging only because what makes chocolate delicious and what makes wine delicious are the same thing. So um, the, 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 the phenolics, the things that give wine its flavor and aroma, there are a lot in wine. There is even more in chocolate. So when you combine the two, sometimes they kind of wrestle each other. It, it doesn't. It doesn't always work. But um, one of my most favorite wines uh, with chocolate is an Italian sparkling wine uh, called Brichetto, uh, Brichetto d'Aquila. Um, it it literally tastes like like cherries and strawberries. And when you have it with any kiss of chocolate, it tastes like chocolate covered strawberries or cherries. It, it's, it couldn't be any better. Um, but a uh, nice effervescence, um, sweet, but not too sweet, not drying so that the chocolate doesn't interfere. Um, absolutely delicious. Um, let's see, what other desserts? Um, bread pudding, I used to, I had family members who would often serve bread pudding. Um, that's a that's a belt of bourbon. If I if I'm gonna call that one out, uh, that that's that's just yeah. You got to You got to go with the the hard stuff on that one. Um, so what are, your, what are your feelings about ice wine? Gary has had ice wine. Oh before. yeah. What's no, ice, ice wine? Even, what's ice wine? So 
in its in its best in its best uh, version, ice vine is where um, a usually an aromatic grape. Um, Riesling is is very famous. Uh, Gewurztraminer is also famous. There there is a um, a hybrid, a French hybrid grape that grows here, but grows very well in in the the Niagara Peninsula in Canada, uh, called Vidal. Um, but basically, ice vine when it's working, um, and and I'll clear, I'll qualify that in a minute. Um, the the grapes achieve perfect ripeness, so they have retained a ton of acidity, but also full development of sugars and and flavors at the time they are naturally frozen in say early november uh, or late november depending on when that freeze comes that so then the the grapes are are i mean it's 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 a it's a fairly expensive wine for the simple reason that a vineyard crew has to visit the vines five or six times before they've thinned out all of the things that weren't perfect but when those vines freeze naturally, the grapes uh, are taken and pressed. And when they're pressed, when they're frozen, uh, the only thing that the, the water typically stays largely in the, the, the globby grape mess. Um, and what bleeds out is the sugar and the flavor. And so when you ferment that, it makes very concentrated, very intense wines. Essentially, you've 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 naturally um, removed water content, so you've concentrated it by removing water. Um, so the problem is uh, climate change. Um, to get to that perfect stage, you have to have everything work out perfectly. Like you have to have um, the 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 temperature has to be ideal through the whole growing season. Because what you again, what you want is grapes that they have not they're not um, you know, they, they're not rotten, they're not moldy, and, and they're, they're actually dessert wines that want mold. But in this case, they do not want mold. They just want the grapes. It's harder to do. So what's happening more and more is uh, growers are, are harvesting those grapes um, at optimal ripeness and taking them to a commercial freezer and freezing them artificially and then pressing them. Um, but ice fine, um, it's, I mean, it's, it, Again, a natural concentration of those flavors um, often just tastes like, you know, honeyed melon and apricots and peaches. And, you know, you, you, a, a two ounce pour of that wine would be a, considered a full pour. So you, you need very little to taste it for a very long time. Um, ice fine and apple pie is amazing. Um, it, it has a lot of those same flavors. And I mean, I think I've probably even poured ice wine on apple pie because um, it's like gravy. It's delicious. Um, so yeah, I love, sadly, ice wine is becoming more and more expensive. For example, the bottles, um, I mean, in the, in the 20 some years that I've sold wine, um, I mean, I think a bottle of, of Niagara Peninsula Vidal ice wine was maybe $35. When I started selling it, it's it's around ninety today. Um, it, it's simply they they just don't make enough. In fact, German ice wine, where where it's most famous, um, I have been offered half bottles that would be four or five hundred dollars. Wow. Um, so it, it's I mean it unfortunately it's very hard to make naturally uh, um, anymore. Okay, I want to get through the uh, well. There's. One serious question and one um, not so serious question, but are there local grapes that you can remember, Kansas wines made with local grapes that you might recommend for Thanksgiving dinner? Um, actually, um, I, 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 I can't speak specifically to um, individual wineries, but yes, the, the grapes that grow well in the Midwest, I mean, we, we have a continental climate, so our, our summers are hot, our winters are cold. That is not where the grapes that uh, we're drinking today originated. The grapes we, you know, all, the, the two wines that we're tasting today and the vast majority of wines that we drink come from one single tiny little offshoot of the vine family that's European grapes. It's, a, it's, a, it's an offshoot called Vitis vinifera. 
And so 90 plus, you know, percent of all the, the wine you find in a wine shop is vinifera vines. Vinifera doesn't do well in our climate. Hybrid vinifera does. So what they will do is they will hybridize a, um, a European vine with uh, actually a, a native vine of North America. Um, and there, and some of those have been um, actually using our vines. The French returned the favor. Uh, we gave them some problems with their vineyard um, years in the 1850s, um, wiped out almost all their vineyards. We then sold them the cure. We had our rootstock was impervious to what killed all their vineyards. Uh, so we gave it back to them. Uh, but, but there are a lot of French hybrids that are grown in this area. And they're, they're generally um, hybridized to survive the winter. I mean, that's the biggest issue. How do you get these? I mean, winter kill is, is awful. If you, you know, you put a, put a, a tender plant out in, in, our, in our winter and it won't last. So uh, the grapes that are grown here, that, that grow here best are all hybrids. Um, Vignol is a, is a grape that is grown. Um, it's uh, sort of Gewürztraminer-esque. Um, there is a, a white called Seval Blanc, uh, again, a French-American hybrid. Um, Seval has, I would say it's a sort of like, if it's done in a dry style, it's almost like a Pinot Grigio. But I very, very much like Seval Blanc. Uh, in fact, probably one of the best Kansas wines I ever had was 20 years ago uh, from Greg Scheip out at Davenport. He had done a Seval that I mean it it I it was it literally is the the one of one the the, the best wine I've ever had uh, from the Midwest. Um, red wines. Uh, there's a there's a varietal called Chamberson um, that is. Uh, a little tannic, depending on how it's made, but sort of Pinot Noir-ish. Um, there's another grape called uh, St. Vincent uh, that is also sort of Pinot Noir-esque. But um, Norton is pro Norton, uh, also called Cynthiana, is probably the most um, the most popular grape. I mean, uh, Norton is the is the state grape of of Missouri. And I would say Norton might be a little tannic for, uh, for Thanksgiving, but there, you know, it can be made into a juicier style, but um, Norton, Norton is, is quite tasty. But I, I can't, uh, unfortunately, I can't speak to uh, specific producers uh, sure. to, to recommend, but yeah. Okay. Well, our last question is, um, <laughs> I've lost it now, Scott Morgan, which wine best ensures family love and adoration? asked Scott Morgan. And I'm yeah. going to answer that. I think it's boxed wine. Yes. So, so let's talk it, about boxed wine. Absolutely. <laughs> good, good segue. So especially so if you I, have a big family. <laughs> well, or or I would say, I mean, there is nothing wrong with having members of, of your family that really don't care what's in their wine glass. And um, and so if, if that's the case. <laughs> you don't, you certainly don't need to go out and blow the doors off. The great thing about box wine is that the box wine of say 10 or even 15 years ago is, it still exists a little bit, but the quality of box wine has skyrocketed. Um, and you can find pretty impressive box wine these days. Um, it, it, I, I would say it's, it's not gonna, um, you're probably not gonna like lie awake, you know, 10 years later thinking about it, but, um, do people in our industry drink it? Absolutely. Um, there's, I mean, it's, uh, keeping box wine around is, it just makes sense. Um, what's happened in the last say 10 or so years is, um, well, what, what started out was people were like, you know, box wine is, is truly disgusting. And, and there, there was a time um, where box wine was really, what you were getting was a chemical stew that ha nature had almost nothing to do with. And the box wine industry realized they were losing out 
Um, I mean, there were certain customers that honestly didn't care, but there were a lot of wine drinkers who, if they were just able to raise the quality level of, of the box wine, now box wine is, a, is, a, is in play. And that's happened. Um, I would say, for the most part, the, the box wines that I find most interesting come from, and it, and it follows a formula we often look at, which is grapes are an agricultural product. Where in the world can these, these products best be grown? And with box wine, Spain and Portugal, Spain and Portugal have produced wine for centuries. They're, they're not new at the game. Um, and they know where to grow it. They know how to make it. And so some of the most compelling wines I've come across, uh, box wine have been Spanish red blends, Portuguese red blends. I mean, you may not, it may not be varietal, varietally defined. So it may not say Cabernet Sauvignon on the, on the box or Pinot Noir on the box, but, um, the quality of the juice in the box, I mean, Black Box, there's a, a large, large company called Black Box. Um, and uh, they were one of the first to point out the fact that if you take, if you take four bottles of wine, which is, is the equivalent of three liters, if you take th four bottles of wine and you remove the glass and you remove the cork and you put it into a, 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 a plastic sleeve in a, in a cardboard box, you remove 40% of the cost. And that's true. That, that, that's, just, that's just how it is. Glass is really expensive because it's expensive to produce and it's, and it's really expensive to ship because it's heavy. Um, a, a plastic bladder, in fact, um, we've even started seeing this play out on a large scale. Um, wineries in, in Europe realized, why, why do we put our wine in glass here and then ship it abroad? Why not just put it in a big plastic bladder and bottle it in the United States, which is the largest wine market in the world? So it makes sense that you know, they would send it to the United States. Um, so that's happening. I mean, there, there, are, there are a lot of products that are being bottled in the United States, but because of the cost savings, um, it, it is, it is being shipped in a bladder. I wish we could get to the point where we could see nicer wines show up in box. Uh, right now, I would say the hard ceiling is about 24 bucks. Um, anything North of 24 bucks, it doesn't matter on the quality. Um, the consumer is still looking at that as a box. And, and I, I acknowledge that I probably would feel the same way. Um, but you know, once it's in your glass, if it's good juice, it doesn't care that it came out of a plastic bag. And it um, lasts so, longer too, right? I mean, that's the, one of the advantages if you're a single person or even a, a couple who might have one glass a night, it will last far oh, longer. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, box wines will usually, I would say overestimate. I mean, I would, I would say three, four weeks, it's probably going to start showing some, some oxidation. I mean, but um, you're 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 taking a, a a wine out of a out of a vessel that does not see light, which is very damaging to wine. It does not see air, which is very damaging to wine. You can keep it in the fridge. You, I mean, red or white, just keep it in the fridge um, and let it warm up to temperature. But yeah, I mean, it it you don't have to worry about your bottle going south in a matter of days. Um, as you would with, with glass. Um, but it's also, again, it, it, it's, it's just, I mean, once your bottle is empty, you're left with a bottle. Um, I would rather be left with wine. You know, there's, there's just not, um, you're paying a lot of money to ship glass and yeah. there are certain wines that will always remain that way, but, but box wines are definitely not to be afraid of. Um, there, there's some really nice stuff coming out. Do you have any other brands uh, that you can recommend besides Black Box? Um, I uh, admittedly a lot of the a lot of the brands are are either wines that we have sold in glass that have transitioned to boxes or have been boxes from regions like the so Spain and Portugal. I think it really is hard to go wrong just because the quality of juice they're putting in the box is good. 
Um, the other place that's intrigued me is Washington State because Washington um, has a lot of real estate. It's fairly inexpensive to purchase. Grapes don't need a lot of tending. They, they do very well there. So the quality of, of wine coming out of Washington um, for box wine is, is pretty good. Um, I, in fact, I had a uh, thing was called Brown Box. I mean, it literally is a brown box, um, but it was Washington Cabernet. And I tried it and usually, you know, I'm expecting something that's kind of juicy, maybe not a ton of structure. I mean, this had grit. There was tannic structure on this wine and, and nice depth. I mean, I was impressed. So it's really, um, it's really more about the region, the source of the wine versus the brand of the boxed wine. Yes. What you're saying. Well, and it's funny, um, black box, I don't like all black box equally. Like it, I mean, right now, I think in the store, we have Chardonnay in black box from Monterey. So Monterey is a great place for Chardonnay. I mean, if, if, you, if you go to the regions where nature makes the wine, and you don't have to worry about it being doctored. I mean, it's, it is going to be doctored, but not to the extent. I mean, for example, uh, Fred Franzia, five, the, the king of the five liter box. Um, Franzia is growing all of that fruit in the Central Valley where we're growing produce and lettuce and stuff. Wineries are not growing there, but Fred is because all of the, um, all of the deficiencies that, that wine has he's gonna adjust with a chemical engineer at the winery in Modesto. So nature's not making that wine, but there's a lot of wine where you taste it and you're like, if it was manipulated aggressively, I can deal with it. You know, it's, yeah. it's, not, it's not disqualifying. Yeah. Well, the Everett's have two recommendations. One is Quadrum from Spain. Yes, yes, right. yes, oh, yes. Big yes. endorsement, we, big endorsement yes. for that. Yeah. And yep. then Borsal from Spain, uh, but they can't seem to get it in a box here anymore. Um, so, so no, uh, no, uh, uh, Borregas Borsal. I know that wine. Um, yeah. It's not available in the box anymore. Um, okay. That was a great one. Um, we we loved that wine. Um, uh, unfortunately, I don't know. I mean, it 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 may have come down to the fact that that the winery realized that they were undercutting themselves by offering a deal. I mean, it, it may have come, I, I, there have been products we, we had, um, there was a, it was, it was maybe 20 bucks on the shelf. It was organic. It was a, it was a blend from the Rhone Valley uh, from a large producer and it just blew away in the wind because they were like, you know what, we're killing ourselves. Like we, we put this on the market and now nobody's buying the glass bottles. Right. And so it may be something related to that. But um, no, the, the Quadrum, um, that is a, a product um, done by a, a, uh, an importer named Jorge Adonias, which is a great Spanish importer. But um, yeah, Quadrum is delicious. They do a white blend. They do a red blend. And they have, I mean, you, four bottles for 20 bucks of that wine is a deal. Um, absolutely. Great. Well, I think with that now we will try to um, collate all these little notes here uh, in the chat and send them to everybody uh, soon. But because there is a basketball game starting at seven yeah. and it is now 604, I think we ought to call it good for the night. We Thank you, as always, Steve. It was great information. Um, you all can unmute if you want to, uh, or just give you the mime applause. The mime applause. Uh, Thank you. Great information. I think you've helped everybody make their Thanksgiving dinner that much better. And um, with that, we'll just wish everybody a very happy Thanksgiving. I have, a, have a great Thanksgiving. Thank yeah. you so much. And yeah. uh, be Same well. To you. Same to yeah, you. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. It was great. Cheers, everybody. We'll see you next time.